Um, it might just be that it wasn't fully developed, but you mentioned something that, at least for me, I'm incredibly critical of. Um, you mentioned that you can't you can't. There's nothing you can do essentially to raise the consciousness of the people as an organizer. Um, that, that, that there's sort of like a mass movement that kind of happens because of material conditions. Um, but I mean, to a certain extent, uh, I mean, not not to be overly dogmatic. I'm only quoting Lenin because I think Lenin yeah, is right yeah. in this respect. Um, going again uh, uh, back to what is to be done, doesn't the very presupposition of a professional revolutionary entail that it's not just the objective forces of this outrage or that outrage, but as a matter of fact, we need the subjective forces of a revolutionary party always intervening, always trying to raise consciousness. And of course, the quintessential example for Lenin is uh, you know, a worker who is so good at subjectively organizing that they organize their own factory shouldn't be working 16 hours a day. They should be part of the revolutionary vanguard, right. the revolutionary party, uh, you know, organizing full time. I mean, yes, yeah. I, 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 that is a, a little bit of a misunderstanding. I'm really glad that you brought it up. Because what I was saying was that we can't create the mass movement, but that doesn't mean we don't have an extremely, even in the time, every single day. All across the, this country, there are people who are waking up and they're disillusioned with what's going on. And what we do now is extremely important. <clears throat> what I mean building up an organization, <clears throat> I mean recruiting more people, having a greater division of labor, uh, having more specialization within the organization, um, you know, doing everything that you need to do to, to build that organization. But most importantly, it means bringing in, you can't do that any of those things, unless you can recruit and bring in more people. And every day, the people who are waking up disillusioned with what's going on, uh, they are being offered, you know, mostly not a revolutionary socialist answer to why they're disillusioned. You know, what they're getting instead is they're getting the Tea Party, uh, they're getting uh, religious answers to it that say, you know, and the, the religious answers which is don't think about what's going on here on Earth, you reward if you are faithful, you know, will come in the, in, the, in the next life. There, there's a lot of that. I mean, <laughs> that's very popular all over the place. And there's also, you know, more fascist answers. You know, the, the, problem, the problem is the immigrants, the problem is people of color, you know, the problem is gay people. I mean, all of these things are brought up and, and are offered to people as explanations for why they are having the problems that they're having. And every other answer, it's to pit you against somebody else or to have you withdraw altogether from the world. And our message, which is to say, you know, we as working people should look beyond the differences that have been driven, pounded into our brains, and they have been. I mean, if you watch like primetime TV ever, almost all the humor revolves around making fun of somebody or the differences between people. You know, there's so much, I mean, it's constantly, and to say to people, you know, we have a commonality of interest and a commonality of problems, while at the same time recognizing that there are special oppressions, which, you know, we have to take into account in the United States. But, so I, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with Leonard about that. That has to be, that's the ongoing process. My point was, we don't, we cannot go out, no matter, if we went out tomorrow and we gave out uh, 50,000 flyers here, we wouldn't necessarily have uh, 1,000 people come to a demonstration, or maybe not even 50. You know, it's, that, that's not under our control. What is under our control is building up organization. And in building the organization also means a lot of different things. Like I started out talking about this demonstration in San Francisco. We should think all the time, like, how can we build solidarity between people? You know, how can we make, you know, how can we, and it's action that really does it. Without action, there's nothing. You know, I mean, without action, all the, the discussion are, you know, really boils down to how many angels fit on the head of a pin. You know, no matter, you know, how you put it. Yeah. What would you say to a teacher here uh, who is uh, afraid of unionizing at the expense of getting fired? Yeah. Well, you, it's hard to argue with people about that. Because, um, and, and also, I mean, particularly under the conditions that exist now, and the way the whole system has been transformed so that 
in most colleges, and I don't know about this one, but most colleges, the majority of faculty members now are adjuncts. The adjunct system is really a disgusting system. Uh, in a lot of places, people are teaching at three or four different colleges, and they're driving, you know, 800 miles a week to be able to like try to piece together a living. So it's hard to say to them, "Oh, don't worry, you know, it'll be okay." I mean, it's it's uh, and and generally, people who tell you that they're afraid to do it because uh, they're afraid of losing their job, they're not going to do it. The, the, the honest, the, you know, it's kind of like. You have to, it has to be the people who already know that and they say, I don't care, I'm going to do it. But if people tell you, you know, I mean, <clears throat> you encounter a lot of people when you do outreach and, 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 uh, and, and I'm sure that all of you have, and, but you know, you go through all these experiences of talking to people and, you know, you can argue with people, but at, at a certain point you realize, okay, I could maybe argue with this person and I could win them over, or may I, I could argue with this person for the next year and a half and they're not you know, this isn't going to get me anywhere. Maybe I should be talking to somebody else. Uh, but I kind of think that's, I think that's where you, and you have to figure that out. It's not like a, there's not some, you know, table set up or something like that that tells you yes or no. Gotcha. If you don't mind, could you go into the various uh, really existing socialist countries uh, the previously existing socialist countries and the various anti-imperialist struggles right. that, that the PSL either supports or doesn't support? Well, the, the, I would say this, is that <clears throat> there's no country that has fully achieved socialism in the world up until today um, because they have none of had the opportunity. The full achievement of socialism would be marked, in our opinion, by an, a, a, a relative abundance in society and I don't mean abundance like we, you know, like 43 different kinds of cereal and 123 kinds of, of, of you know, toothpaste and so forth. <laughs> I mean, those are not really necessities of life. That's like such a waste. But I mean, that where the society had, was, was passing out of, uh, there was no more poverty. Where there was housing for people, there was food for everyone, there was health care for people, there were jobs, you know. That, and also that there was the beginning of the withering away of the state. And so I don't think that that can actually happen if we understand the state to be a repressive apparatus against one class or another, including in a worker state. Uh, like uh, Cuba has a state. It has an army. It has a, a, a militia, which in involves a huge part of the population. Over a million people, I think, are in the militia. And it has police, and it has prisons, and so forth. And um, it uh, represses the capitalists or those who collaborate with the United States and are counter-revolutionaries. So I don't think it's really possible to have full socialism until probably there's been, uh, until imperialism is eliminated in the world, and then you can move on. But in the popular uh, language of socialism, where there's socialized, socialized economy, um, the first uh, country that, that succeeded in doing that was the Soviet Union, and not without a huge number of problems, internal problems as well as external problems, but it had a socialized economy, and it, it showed, one of the things the Soviet Union showed was the incredible uh, potential, the, the dynamism of the centralized economy, of a, of a socialized economy. The Soviet Union went from being the poorest of the big countries in Europe in 1917, and then it suffered huge devastation over the next few years in the Civil War. But by the 1960s, it was the second largest economy in the world. And it had gone through, in addition to all it had gone through during the revolutionary period, it had undergone unbelievable destruction at the hands of the Nazis. 27 million people killed, two-thirds of the production destroyed in the country. And yet, and even though it had to have a, have a powerful military after the war, because they, they, could, they knew the United States would, would attack them otherwise um, and would launch atomic war against them, uh, which came very, very close in the late 40s and early 50s, as well as the early 60s. They were able to, to, uh, to build tremendously. So with all of its problems and contradictions, we supported the Soviet Union. We supported the other countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, that would have been uh, Poland, East Germany, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, but it still was one country, Romania. Bulgaria and also Yugoslavia, which had its own differences with that bloc. Also China, after the, the Chinese Revolution of 49, and Mongolia, which uh, had, uh, had a socialized economy, even though it was mostly still a nomadic country. 
uh, after the Russian Revolution. Vietnam uh, and, and Laos, uh, the Cuba, um, uh, North Korea. Um, the, we supported the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen when it existed. It used to be South Yemen. And those are, it was a very, very poor country that was trying to build, uh, and it was destroyed by intervention in, in war. And also Ethiopia was trying to for a period of time as well. Um, and uh, today we support, um, we don't believe that China has, a, has, has, a capital, has fully has capitalism restored. There's a very interesting thing that I just read that's a very, very interesting document. It was written by a guy who was in the international Marxist tendency. I don't know if you're familiar with that. In some places it's called Workers International League. 